we're uh, needing to be very courageous at this time because of how we can feel the trouble coming. And if you haven't felt the trouble uh, regarding uh, not just this uh, supposed pandemic, but the, uh, the, the increased attack on people with Christian faith that uh, are not able to do certain things and um, have been sued and actually by unbelievers and uh, saw their properties disappear on them uh, due to these pagan civil suits, uh, it is it is uh, time for Christians to be courageous, but they have to realize that some of the things that they're being uh, put to or experience is based on their lack of knowledge and the fact that they are doing something that God will allow them to be corrected on. So they will experience correction from God based on being in the wrong side. God will not protect those um, who are not following scripture so we need to get our head right into the scripture now when i keep on bringing up job and the surname and i talk about job 32 21 22 in previous videos the reason i keep bringing this up is because god has told you what is acceptable and not acceptable through scripture so if we go into job 32 21 22 and i've done this on a previous video so if you think I'm just being repetitive, it's because I need to get this more so embedded in your mind and in your heart so you actually realize what God is telling you through Scripture. Now, we know Job was tested on whether or not he would only serve his maker out of love or was it based on material reward. And it's interesting that the name Job, of course, in English is Job when we would actually read it the way we'd read it in English, which is official public business for private dishonest gain. And that's really kind of the test uh, that Satan put upon uh, Job, that he wasn't worshiping God for love or doing things for the right reasons. He was doing it only for monetary reward. So you can understand the meaning of the British uh, definition of job, which is official public business tax business for private dishonest gain which means you're using the public funds for your own gain which is why you're being taxed under license so we go to the book of job and job 32 21 22 states let me not i pray you accept any man's person now those are titles that are made up by men he's saying don't accept a man's person welcome to the surname Neither let me give flattering titles unto man, for I know not to give flattering titles, in so doing, my maker would soon take me away. Now, the word, the phrase take me away means to execute. God would execute you. So, we have to be careful on reading the Bible, what is meant by those words. Now, if we go to the Strong's Concordance, which is dealing with those flattering titles, titles in general, it will go to uh, Strong's Concordance H3655, so 3655. And it says that this comes from the Hebrew word, I don't know if I'm enunciating it properly, but it's kana. And it says, a primitive root to address by an additional name, hence to eulogize, give flattering titles, surname himself. So God is not telling you to accept these titles we're supposed to refuse these titles not accept them and therefore how can we come out from among them when we realize that from what we read in the pope's address to his masses when he said that the last name belonged to the church so it's the kirk so the pagan temple was involved with the use of his surname it's a title of a member involved in a pagan temple worship, someone involved in pharmakia or sorcery. And the come out of her, my people, or they leave, escape from, which has come out, is an onus that was placed on us in the Revelation prophecy that we were to come out. He was talking to his people to listen, wake up, and come out of that pagan Roman Catholic church 
which involves all these Protestant religions also that are all registered under branches of papal Rome. You're all noted as registered sinners who have denied Christ, and you're willing to be the surety for your own sins based on being a surety for a pagan title. So wouldn't it make sense that you would be on the hook for something that's incorrect or wrong if you're not following the scriptural counsel? So we, uh, we further uh, can go to what is the escape? So, well, let's go to the word escape. And I know there'll be many people probably in quandary on this uh, by email after they realize where we're going with this. But there is an escape clause in contract law. And because contract law is citizenship in the legal world. So you were never able to be a citizen, but when you entered into it, you pushed play in it, even though it may be fraud, but when you act in it, it removes the fraud. Consent removes the mistake. Mistake, when it's discovered, removes consent. So we're going to go to escape clause. I'm reading out of Black's 10th, and it says, a contractual provision that allows a party to avoid performance under specified conditions, and it gives usually contained in insurance policy. So look at this, okay? And it just says a contractual provision, that's a clause that allows a party to avoid performance under specified conditions. Well, according to this court case that we had shown earlier regarding uh, Paparala, um, you know, basically, uh, and the Queen, the Interior Court of Justice, November 3rd, 2011, Regina versus Paparella, the quote came out of this. There is no provision in the Canadian legal system which allows an individual to transfer his given names to anyone, whether to a person, a corporation, or a trust. Any document purporting to achieve that goal is in itself invalid, and having such a document notarized does not validate the document. Okay, now... We've definitely got the understanding on it. In fact, the, the, the complete quote was, for any purpose, they were not allowed to do this. So if there is no provision or clause in the contract for you to transfer your given names, why are you putting your given name in on all the contracts that you signed? Why are you doing that? You weren't required. It says, render to Caesar what is Caesar. Caesar is only entitled to what is Caesar's. And because the money in the coin is run through the surname... The title that belongs to Caesar, the fictio, which is a fiction of law, only thing that he could require you to basically have for his use while you're living among them would only be the assignment of what is his. But he is not, does not have the power to make you provide your private God-given name to them. One belongs to God, one belongs to Caesar. It's that simple. So, therefore, if you look back at early Christianity, and we'll deal with this in another video that will deal with the term slave, you will find out that the early Christians, at the time they were living in amongst the Roman pagans, there was two terminologies. People that belonged to Caesar were called Caesareans, slaves of Caesar. Those that belonged to Christ were called Christians.